Okay, now let's move on towards the reactions of amines after completing their methods of preparations. Now, one obvious kind of reaction would be simple acid base reaction because this amine has a nitrogen which has lone pair of electron and that lone pair of electron can be given to an atom that requires a lone pair and this nitrogen can act as a base. So this amine can act as a base and if we add a acid, if we add suppose H2SO4, then this nitrogen will gain a H plus and will convert into nitrosonium ion or in this case substituted ammonium ion and you'll have a bisulfate ion like this. So in this case we will have a um, substituted ammonium sulfate salt like this. So this will be a simple acid base reaction. There's not much to talk about. I mean similarly if we have suppose if I have dimethyl amine and I react it the, with this this with nitric acid. So this nitric acid um, although is oxidizing agent but here we are considering that um, we are using a dilute form of nitric acid and anyway this is a 2 degree amine so this will not be oxidized very easily. So this will be a simple acid base reaction. So what we are going to get out of here. It will be dimethyl ammonium nitrate. Fine. So this will be one class of reaction. This will be a simple acid base reaction, nothing else. The second kind of reaction in which the again lone pair of nitrogen will come into picture will be the reactions in which this nitrogen or the amine will act as a nucleophile. For example, this is the amine and suppose we have taken an acyl chloride like this, then we have seen numerous reactions before where a nucleophile comes and attack this carbon of C double bond O because it has a plus charge polarity because chlorine and oxygen has pulled electrons from this carbon. So this nitrogen is can come and attack this carbon and this amine can act as a nucleophile. When that happens, this nitrogen forms a bond with carbon and this chlorine comes out and C double bond O is regenerated because it was broken. How is that broken? When this nitrogen attacks the carbon, then this C double bond O is broken because carbon is making a new bond. So a previous bond has to be broken. So the pi bond breaks and here's the pi bond. And when this pi C double bond O is regenerated, this chloride ion comes out. So what we have is a amide like this. So th here this is a simple nucleophilic attack in which this amine is acting as a nucleophile and this will is the substituted amide that we will get as the final product. Simple. Now this similar reaction can also occur if we have an acid anhydride. Like this instead of acyl chloride. Now in this carbon has relatively less electron deficiency than that of acyl chloride. Acyl chloride is very reactive because oxygen and chlorine both pulls the electron and no one gives electron to this carbon. Here in this case this oxygen gives electrons to both the carbon. So this this oxygen is in cross conjugation. It does resonance with both the carbonyl group. So this carbon has relatively much, much less electron deficiency than the carbon of acyl chloride because of the electronic density of oxygen is diffused and oxygen is doing resonance with this C double bond O. But nevertheless, it is also having some deficiency and because of that, this amine can act as a nucleophile and attack this carbon as well. So now the same step will occur this oxygen will gain a negative charge here and when the second step here the chloride ion is coming out 
here this whole group that will be carboxylate ion suppose this group comes out then oxygen will gain a negative charge and what comes out is this now this is a carboxylate ion this oxygen does equivalent has two equivalent resonating structures this whole anion has two equivalent resonating structures so this is stable so it acts as a leaving group this comes out nitrogen forms bond with this oxygen and this amide is generated this is same as what you got previously fine so here amine is just acting as a nucleophile and it can does do reaction with both acyl chloride and this acid anhydride fine now there could be other situations in which this amine is acting as a nucleophile wherever you have a carbon having electron deficiency their amine can go and attack it for example if we have benzene sulfonyl chloride like this then here we have a sulfur and this sulfur is also will, will also have plus charge polarity because oxygen from both the side and this chlorine is pulling electron from the sulfur because oxygen and chlorine both are more electronegative than sulfur so in this case again amine can attack this sulfur and give its electron to the sulfur when it does that then one of the bond of sulfur has to break and a new bond with nitrogen will be formed like this now s double bond o will be regenerated because there's a very good leaving group attached to sulfur that will leave to facilitate the formation of s double bond o and here we have n substituted sulfoxamide it's a amide so we call it this amide is sulfoxamide and because there's a r group on this nitrogen so it is n substituted sulfoxamide that's what we call it fine so in all the three reaction we have seen the, there's nothing new we have seen this kind of reactions before as well now this nitrogen just goes and strike the atom which has electron deficiency if possible the double bond is regenerated if you have a leaving group like chlorine so this is nothing new all right all right now based on the merit of the last three situation we have seen i'm giving you a problem and you try to solve this This is an amine and you have phosgene gas. Now try to get the product. What are you going to get? Now in order to get the product, first of all, you have to know what this phosgene gas is. If you don't know, then surely you will not be able to solve it. Now if you know, go ahead, solve it. If you don't know, then look at this. This is phosgene gas. Chlorine chlorine on both side of carbonyl group this is phosgene gas and commit this to your memory this is phosgene gas now once you know that this is phosgene gas how the reaction is going to occur oxygen and chlorine all will be pulling electron from this carbon this poor carbon will have an electron deficiency some it will have some partial plus charge on it so what nitrogen does it do goes and attacks such atoms like we have understood and seen in last three cases so you will have this kind of situation fine so now this again chlorine will come out and c double bond o will be regenerated so you'll have this fine now this oxygen is still pulling electron and this chlorine is still pulling electron from carbon so carbon is still is having sufficient plus charge polarity and nitrogen is still adjacent to this carbon so nitrogen will again attack this carbon 
this carbon will again lose one of the previous bond and oxygen will again develop a negative charge and our C double bond O is again broken. There's a plus charge appearing on that carbon and if I remove H plus from here that plus charge will also go like this. Fine. Now there's a, a chlorine once again sitting on the carbon and if this chlorine goes out then C double bond O will be regenerated. So this step of removal of a living group and reconstruction of C double bond O will happen once again. So finally what we will have is this. We are going to get a isocyanate if we use a amine and a phosgene gas. C double bond O will be constructed like this. So this will be the final product of isocyanate. Now this isocyanate you have been looking since many reactions. You saw it in Hoffman bromide, you saw it in Curtius reaction as well, you saw it in Smith reaction as well and here it is. Now you also know and I'll just quickly revise you that uh, when you hydrolyze this you get amine and you get CO2 gas. So you can get back the amine you started with because this step we have seen in last three reactions in three reactions for the method of preparation of amines. So uh, you must uh, remember this and just for a quick revision that's what happens when you hydrolyze isocyanate. Fine. So this is a second kind of reaction of amine we have seen.